talk about skills, we talk about the, the human capital in uh, Africa, and if we have to drive the African economy, especially uh, as far as uh, the African continent of free trade area and the agreement under this uh, historic free trade concern, uh, there is a need uh, for uh, real uh, practical education to be able uh, to bring an, uh, an understanding, a clearer understanding of the stakes of well, what it takes to be able to take Africa to the uh, fore. And of course, uh, to you, uh, uh, dear Paseka, uh, we've been talking about empowering Africa. We've been talking about identifying uh, the uh, internal uh, obstacles or challenges to this. But then let's look uh, and uh, reiterate on the aspect of uh, the, the, the economic aspect of it. Because when we look at this uh, uh, global transformation, Africa can actually have a greater voice out there at the international arena if, of course, internally there is practical uh, transformation like Tom Pondis will always say, to be able to collaborate or to uh, capitalize on the advantages of globalization, there is need to build wealth, there is need to have power. So now let's bring it uh, to the economic perspective. So. How can Africa, with the changes that have occurred, uh, like we see Africa walking towards uh, a single currency, and of course, how can Africa position itself at uh, the global economy? We're looking at the global economic market. What are those internal obstacles that needs to be fixed to bring Africa's voice very uh, loud at uh, the international arena as far as uh, the world market is concerned. Dear Prasekar. Thank you, thank you very much, Clarice. Uh, I just want to say that the most important thing for me right now is to for us to understand that the global economy is already very uh, flawed in itself. Uh, global currencies can be easily manipulated. So we need to keep that in mind when we think about liberating ourselves from where we currently find ourselves. It is easy for it is easy to manipulate a, a currency to make sure that it does not co uh, compete with specifically I'll use the dollar because it's the most common uh, currency in the globe uh, where you can find its use everywhere so with that being said i need us to, to 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 move to what is practical that we can do for us to make sure that we have a a movement of goods within the continent so that we can strengthen our economy uh one of the most difficult things is to think about a a, a borderless africa uh, thinking about it from a practical point of view, we need to understand that not every country in the continent wants a borderless, uh, a borderless Africa. Uh, not a lot of not every citizen in the continent wants a borderless Africa. And why don't they want that? Those are countries that are fundamentally nationalistic in their approach. There's a lot of leaders who do not want to lose sovereignty and who wants to continue to control everything within their country without interference from the rest of the continent. And a lot of these countries are fundamentally problematic, if we are honest, and if we look at them from an objective point of view. These are countries that believe that a united Africa will not benefit them at all, but we know that in actual fact that is the strongest approach that we can take to strengthen our economies as a continent and particularly as a united front. So once we were able to do that, uh, we would be able, only then would be able to start discussing ideas of a common currency, which is also difficult because a common currency in Africa means that we decentralize the dollar in the continent, we decentralize the uh, the, 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 the safar um, in the continent, you know, and a lot of countries will not be happy with that, specifically uh, America and France. So if you, if you decentralize the safar, if you move away from the dollar, what happens then to those countries particularly? Those countries cannot afford for that to happen because they are very uh, they are profiting from their currencies being in circulation in this continent. However, if we are successful in centralizing our own economies, if we are uh, our own currency, if we are able to make sure that those nationalistic countries or leaders who want to centralize themselves in the continent do not continue with this way of thinking and think of more of an approach from a pan-African 
Americanist point of view, then only then can we be able to successfully challenge the dominating currencies in the continent in the world. Because realistically, right now, which African currency do we think is able to compete the rest of the house currencies? Nothing is competing to the yuan. Nothing is competing. Even uh, the 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 Safar is not competing with uh, the, the 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 yuan. Is not competing with the dollar. Is not competing with the pound. Is not competing with the euro. So it's 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 very difficult for us to be able to say that we have a currency that we can all back. However, if we were to depart from the, of the departure of actually thinking of the centralized yeah. currency, only then would we be able to say that we can uh, have a currency that is strong enough to be able to compete with the rest of the of the world and the uh, the, 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 the the general north. Uh, I, I I think a lot about the BRICS currency, which has been uh, which has been spoken about in passages and on the side that uh, this BRICS currency, we need to really think about it and we really need to be invested in it. In an ideal world for me, in an ideal world for me, as a Pan-Africanist and a Pan-Africanist scholar, as someone who wants to center or uh, centralize Africa, I genuinely believe that we need to resolve a lot with ourselves before we align ourselves with anyone else. Because at this point, we've been used as pawns in a lot of geopolitical wars that we have no, nothing to do with. We've seen how before the war between Ukraine uh, and, and, and Russia, how uh, France was retaliating to, to Russia, uh, 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 putting its imprint in the continent and backing a number of the military regimes, which were able to have coups. Um, we were able to see that uh, France was very was very stern in their disapproval or disapproval of Russia coming in the continent, whether it's coming in as assisting, as China has uh, tried to assist through its uh, roads and um, it's roads and I'm um, sorry, this it's leaving roads and rail, uh, roads and rail uh, uh, project, uh, 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 trying to make sure that it tries to align itself with as many countries as possible, not just in the continent of Africa, but in some countries in Asia and the, some countries in the Middle East. With 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 France being able to see that they became very hostile towards the same countries that were trying to remove them, particularly the countries in the Sahel, which have decided to have crews and decided to say that enough is enough, we don't need you here. Why were they doing that? Because they were able to identify that Russia was coming in, China has been uh, strategically coming into the continent over the last decade or more. Um, so if you are able to see that, then you're able to see that you are going to lose a stronghold. And Africa has so much to give out that uh, anyone who works with it or who, who, who believes that building any kind of report with it is bound to benefit in some kind of way or another. So with that, we need to make sure that before we can have all these different relationships, uh, all these non-beneficial relationships, we need to start here at home and make sure that we we, we 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 structurize our own economies and make sure that we structurize our own currency before we can say that we align ourselves with whomever outside of the continent of Africa. If we are able to do that, only then will we be able to say when Russia comes and says that we are willing to sub, to uh, to offer military support we say it is welcome but it's welcome with the understanding that you are not here to build a report that is going where you are going to use us as a pawn against the west we are going to be able to say to China, you are not coming to Africa for you to be able to benefit and contribute or distribute your population to the rest of the world because you feel overwhelmed by the amount of people that you have. You come here with the understanding that you are not going to redistribute, you are not going to send so many of your people here to a point whereby now they start overtaking our own personnel in the continent. These people now have these responsibilities that overshadow the responsibility of the people of the continent. Only if we are able to resolve these matters within the continent are we able to come out and make the argument against these countries that come from the outside. Not everyone is coming from the outside and trying to be as negative as we've seen with the rest of the West. Not everyone. Uh, not everyone. We There are people who are try, genuinely trying to build uh, uh, genuine relationships with the rest of the continent that can be beneficial to the improvement and the uh, progress, uh, progressive uh, development of Africa as a continent. But we can only be certain and we can only be sure 
of that if we find ourselves in a position where we are strong enough to have terms and conditions of how we build and where we build our relationship with the rest of the world. The idea of a uh, 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 free movement of people and the idea of developing our population are very significant and are very important for us to be able to have a strategic continent that can be able to negotiate its place in the rest of the world, that can be able to hold their position, uh, positionality where they can say no to certain things and yes to others. However, this also has to come through a willing uh, approach from the government itself. Every day when I, I watch the news, I watch what is happening in the rest of the continent, I become very uh, frustrated because I, I, I come to learn and understand how useless the AU is as a, as a union, how useless the uh, European Union uh, is as uh, 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 how the the rest of these global bodies specifically have become so useless because they themselves do not play any significant role in having a say in global politics. But there are specific countries that actually uh, uh, play the roles that we would be expecting to be played by the very same bodies. I don't know if I make sense, but I think that is a very important point in saying that something like the AU, the AU should have a more significant role to play in the continent. We should not be seeing what we are currently seeing happening in Sudan, where the people of Sudan have to suffer as a result of really military men who decide that they're going to take the country over for themselves, no matter who suffers on the ground. We should not be seeing what was happening in Tigray if the AU was strong and had any significant significance in what is actually happening in the rest of the continent. We know that these blogs, uh, specifically in Southern Africa, at SADC, ECOWAS, we know that these blogs have become significantly useless, specifically so and more so ECOWAS in itself, because more than anything, what we've learned over the last few years is how ECOWAS has been used as a pawn of the West to make sure that they have, they continue to have a stronghold in the rest of the continent. They are the same body that says nothing when the people of the country suffer on the ground. However, when they decide to take a military position and say that we are going to do a coup and take over the country so that they can be a civilian a rule, they're the first people to come out and impose uh, 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 what sanctions on those leaders. You see where the problem is. It means that we do not have strong enough bodies in the continent that actually care for the people. However, these bodies only care to make sure that they themselves as a union are, are, are flourishing in the eyes of the rest of the world. They don't care about the, the, the continent. The AU does not show me that it has any significant role to play in this continent. I know that the most obvious uh, uh, argument against the point that I am are trying to make right now is the argument that countries are sovereign. You cannot impose uh, certain uh, 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 rules and regulations uh, will go against the laws of a country and the basis that countries are sovereign states. But in reality, then what is the role of the AU? Soft authority or soft uh, diplomacy, at some point it does not help because with soft uh, diplomacy, we're finding that people are still suffering. The black men on the ground and women and child are the ones who are suffering, but we say that we need to center sovereignty. Then what is the role and significance of the AU? What is the role and significance of ECOWAS? I thank you, Clarice.